So chromosome composition tends to remain very constant in species. Remember that chromosomes are long pieces of DNA. So if you end up with a change in the chromosome content, it's really like getting hundreds of mutations. So for example, if you have an extra piece of a chromosome, that could be hundreds or thousands of extra nucleotides. If you have a whole extra chromosome, that could be, again, thousands of nucleotides that have been added. So these are pretty significant changes. If you remember that even a single mutation can be a, a problem for our organism, adding a whole extra chromosome or even pieces of chromosomes can usually be a big problem too. Um, and so thinking about how mitosis and meiosis occur, they're happening in such a way to try and maintain chromosome number. So when they happen correctly, they're going to keep the same chromosome content. Um, and meiosis is going to make sure that egg and sperm can come together and get us back to 46 so that humans always have 46. So these mechanisms are helping to maintain the correct chromosomes. There are problems that can happen, and so that's what we're going to talk a little bit about. So there is chromosomal mutations. These are when you get large either extra pieces of chromosomes or missing pieces or switched pieces. So deletions, um, in this case, it's not like a nucleotide deletion that we were talking about in a previous chapter um, because it's deleting a large section of the chromosome. So again, hundreds of nucleotides. And so if you look at this image here, this whole section is now missing. So notice how the whole chromosome is shorter than it should be. A duplication repeats a whole section. So now this is the part that's been duplicated. So again, that's hundreds or thousands of nucleotides, so now the whole chromosome is longer. Inversions are when the chromosome gets rotated. So this side got turned the other direction. It got flipped. And even though this is not adding nucleotides, it's changing the direction of them. Um, and changing where they are in the chromosome, and so that, that can change gene expression from that chromosome. Same thing with the translocation. A translocation is going to move information from one chromosome to a different chromosome. So these are two different chromosomes. So imagine this is maybe chromosome 1 and this is chromosome 22. Now a piece of 1 is going to be stuck onto 22. Or in this case, it's a switching where they each end up with a piece of the other. So this one now has parts of chromosome 1, and this one is, has parts of 1 and 22 as well. So these are translocations when one piece of a chromosome gets moved to another piece. And again, because it's now in a different location, it's going to change gene expression. So all of these have the potential to have a huge impact on the organism. Um, there's for example, cancers that are associated with translo translocations, cancers associated with duplications and deletions, um, and other abnormalities. So this is not something that, that our body is just going to be okay with. Um, they tend to cause disease. These are usually a result of problems in crossover. So when the cell is trying to exchange pieces, some mistake happens. So that's where a lot of these come from. So other than just pieces of the chromosomes being messed up, you can ha also have big changes in chromosome number. So a whole extra or missing chromosome or even a whole set of chromosomes. So the normal chromosome number in an organism is its euploid number. So for humans, two sets is normal, so 46 chromosomes is normal. Um, polyploidy is when an organism has three or more sets of chromosomes rather than two. So diploid remembers 2n. Polyploidy might be triploid, which is 3n, or tetraploid, which is 4n. There are some organisms that can have that. So if a human were triploid, so this can't happen. This is too detrimental. This is going to be too hurtful. No embryo will ever form that has three sets of chromosomes. But if they did, a triploid human would have a whole extra set. So remember, they normally have two sets of 23, which gives us 46 chromosomes. But if they had three sets of 23, they would have a whole extra set, so they would have 69 chromosomes. So that's a lot of extra chromosomes, and again, that's why in humans that's not going to be viable. They're not going to survive. Anaploid
aneuploidy is a little um, more tolerated, so there are examples of aneuploidy in humans. Aneuploidy is when there's just a particular chromosome that there's extra of or missing. So for example, a trisomy or being trisomic is when there's one extra copy of a chromosome, so 2n plus 1. So for example, humans have 46 chromosomes. If they have one extra, that means they have 47 chromosomes. Monosomy is when they only have one chromosome instead of two. So again, for a human who has a monosomy, they should normally have 46 chromosomes, but they're missing one, so they only have 45 chromosomes. So these are also some examples here. So this is the normal diploid for a fruit fly. If, it, if the fruit fly had a trisomy, there's a third chromosome here when there should only be two. If it has a monosomy, there's only two chromosomes when there should be two. This is polyploidy, so in this case, all of the chromosomes have three. That would be triploidy. And this is an example of tetraploidy. There's four of every chromosome. So that's polyploidy and aneuploidy in fruit flies. Aneuploidy and polyploidy is usually a result of something called non-disjunction. Non-disjunction -disjun literally means failure to separate. So normal meiosis is going to separate the homologous pair and then separate the sister chromatids, so those two divisions, so that you're going to get cells with um, half the chromosome. So in this case, there's um, six chromosomes, so each haploid cell should have three. If non-disjunction occurs, then some cells will end up with extra and some will have none. So in this case, this is non-disjunction of the red chromosome. So because the red chromosome didn't separate, this one didn't get any red chromosomes. So this now has an extra red chromosome. So if this gets fertilized with a sperm, this will now be 2n plus 1. If this one gets fertilized by a sperm, it will also be 2n plus 1. If this one gets fertilized with a sperm, it will be 2n minus 1. Same thing with this one, 2n minus 1, because it's missing one of the chromosomes. So non-disjunction can create cells that either are missing a chromosome or have an extra chromosome. It just means failure to separate. But when you have failure to separate, one's going to get an extra chromosome and one's going to be missing that chromosome. Um, notice that I, when I had, the, in my example here, I had the sperm be normal, and I did that for a reason. Um, maternal age, so the mother's age, is a strong correlate, correlating um, factor to having aneuploidy in offspring. So the most common aneuploidy in humans is Down syndrome. And maternal age greatly increases the risk of Down syndrome in the offspring. And we're still not really sure why, but for some reason, the older a woman is, the more likely she is to have um, extra chromosomes in her eggs. So another sort of weird chromosome variation that can happen sometimes is alloploidy. Alloploidy is when an organism has one set of chromosomes from two or more different species. So this is a picture of ligers. Ligers are alloploid organisms that have one set of chromosomes from a lion and one set from a tiger. So these are created by mating a lion and a tiger. Alloploidy is usually really rare in the wild. So usually animals don't like to mate with other species. They just don't find them sexy. So normally in the wild, a lion only finds a lion sexy and a tiger only finds a tiger sexy. Um, but humans sometimes manipulate this situation. So this is a zoo where lions and tigers were encouraged to mate. Um, we also do this with domesticated animals. You may know that a mule is a hybrid of a horse and a donkey. And usually, an alloploid organism is not fertile. So you don't have ligers mating with each other because the male is sterile. Mules are usually always sterile. So again, you can't create a new species of ligers because they can't mate with each other. Um, so humans can manipulate the situation. Also, the only other time that this happens in the wild is when animals are endangered. When animals are endangered, their populations decline. When their populations decline, they have a harder time finding a mate. 
when they have a harder time finding a mate, this doesn't sound that unlikely, right? They are less picky about a mate. And so you start to see alloploidy occurring more frequently um, when, a, when a population is in trouble. Um, so we've seen this happening with polar bears in um, the Arctic. We've seen this with um, a certain kind of endangered fox in the United States. It's happened with wolves. It happened with the American bison or the buffalo. So it's kind of a common thing that happens when animals are very endangered. So polyploidy, um, polyploidy remembers having that whole extra set. Um, Again, it's usually not going to be okay because having extra chromosomes is not normally okay. But there's a couple of exceptions, and that's what's pictured here. This is two types of amphibians, and when you look at them, they look really, really similar. Um, but actually, this one is diploid, and this one is triploid. And for some reason, this one just seems to tolerate that. It's okay. Plants also are very commonly tetraploid um, or other variations of polyploidy. Um, and again, for, something, for some reason, they're able to just tolerate that. Um, it's not a problem for them. Bees are another interesting one. Males are haploid and females are diploid. So that's actually um, how sex is determined in bees. So that means the males arise from an unfertilized egg and the females come from a fertilized egg. So that's actually how their sex is determined. So aneuploidy in humans is, again, really not tolerated, um, but it's not that unusual. So 5 to 10% of all fertilized human eggs have an abnormal chromosome number, but almost all of those will never be a successful pregnancy. So we know that probably at least 50% of spontaneous abortions, which is the technical term for a miscarriage, are due to problems in chromosomes. So there's just there's some problem in the embryo that is just not going to be able to be a viable human, and so it will be a miscarriage. Um, there's a couple of exceptions to this. So trisomy 21 is Down syndrome. This is the most common of the trisomies in live births, and I'm sure you're familiar with the symptoms. These two trisomies are much more rare. Um, they do occur in live births, but they are eventually fatal in very early um, babyhood, really, usually by two years of age. So the longest they'll live in t is two years. Usually it's maybe a month or so, so really tragic for people who um, have that happen. Um, the, the place where aneuploidy is actually more tolerated in humans is with the sex chromosomes. So earlier I said that females have two X's and males have an X and a Y. So really, you only need one X to be human. The Y is just a little extra that makes you be a man, but to be human, you only need one X. And so you can see a fair amount of deviation in from the, the X or XX or XY and still have a mostly normal person. So for example, XO means that they're missing the um, other X chromosome. So this is a monosomy. This is the only monosomy that's a viable live birth. So they have one X chromosome. Um, again, they're, they're not going to have a lot of problems. There's a couple of things that correlate, like a short, they're shorter, they usually have a couple of sexual maturity issues, but they're mostly normal and they're going to live a normal life. Some people have three X's, so, and again, mostly you might not, they might not even ever even know that they have um, a chromosomal abnormality because it's not ever going to be tested. That's how, like, the symptoms are not important. Same thing with being XYY. Having an extra Y, no problem. Maybe you're going to be a little bit taller, but you pretty much have no symptoms. And then same thing with XXY. You only need one X. This person will probably be mostly, will identify as male, um, though they may have some problems with sexual development, but they're mostly going to be just fine um, because you only need one X to be human. X has everything that's important to being human. Y is just extra for male traits, so as long as you got that one X, you're good, right? So those are the aneuploidies that we see in live births. The other aneuploidies also happen, but they're going to result in a miscarriage. 
Again, because um, like many other organisms, the chromosome content, the chromosome number needs to remain the same. Um, that's the information that we need and the right quantities that we need to be a functioning animal.